This is the Louis T. Network. And I tell them how they did and how they did a great job or they didn't do a good job. I'm starting first this week because I was piss poor last week. I was the worst in the damn lab room last week. That's unacceptable in week 14. It's too late in the season to be having those kind of slip ups. I was horrible last week. I was eight and eight. I barely made it to the Mendoza line. Barely made it to the goddamn Mendoza line. I was horrible. Eight and eight, unacceptable. Oh, I'm out for blood this week. <laughs> oh, you better believe. It's some ass kicking going on this week. And everybody that beat me last week, they're getting their ass whooped this week. And just in case you didn't know, and you haven't been listening for the last 15 to 30 seconds, everybody beat me last week. So everybody's in line for an ass whooping this week. I'm out for blood. I smell it. And I'm coming for every goddamn body that beat me last week. I'm pissed off. Eight and eight? <laughs> I can't live with eight and eight, man. I lost sleep over eight and eight. I didn't eat for two days. Because of eight and eight. <laughs> nah, I'm playing. <laughs> but I'm pissed off. But let me give you the picks, because everybody else, they seem to have figured it out except me. Michael Kane, the Sarge. Nine and seven for Michael Kane. He, he made it just to the Mendoza line. And for everybody that made it to nine and seven, ten and six, nine and seven guys, they were in the same boat as I was in going into Monday night. They were eight and seven, and they needed that Giants victory to get them over the Mendoza line. I, however, wasn't as lucky. I picked the Dolphins and I told you for my selfish reasons, I had to pay for that. I needed to pay for that because I knew the Giants was gonna win that game. I didn't wanna root for the Giants, so I picked the Dolphins and I paid for it. I deserved that, okay? And I went against a lot of my principles in week 14. Two bad football teams, you give the edge to the home team. I didn't do that. I went against my principles, my morals, and I paid for it and I deserve it. But the Sarge didn't go and I told you, you can count on the Sarge for one thing, consistency. I told you, every week you're getting nine to 11 victories from the Sarge, and what did he do? Another nine uh, victory week that he posted. Sarge, nine and seven. JTWE, WWE, excuse me, nine and seven for JTWWE. Again, went into Monday night at eight and seven, Giants got it done, he gets to nine and seven, and to the victor goes the spoil. I'm not here to complain. You did what you were supposed to do. I did. You got it done. Nine and seven for JT WWE. Not double digits. But hell, I can't tell anybody that they didn't get to double digits. That's the pot calling the kettle black. And right now, I'm the blackest kettle in the goddamn kitchen. And I don't have any right to point and, and talk to any pots in this damn 
kitchen right now. Protect, nine to seven for Protect. And uh, he pretty much was online with me. A lot of his picks looked like mine. And so where we different Monday night, he had the Giants, I had the Dolphins, I had to pay and he was able to skate with nine to seven. So yeah, I deserve it, man. You, you want to make reckless picks because you want to get your little feelings involved in picks? That's what you get. And so 9-7 for Protech. He was able to get it done and stay above 8-8. Eight and eight. Insane Juggernaut. 9-7 for Insane Juggernaut. And I'm, I'm going to give him some credit. He's, been, he's a Ravens fan. And uh, all year long, he's been making the Ravens his sole survivor pick. And you can't do that. I say, look, you got to stop picking the Ravens for your sole survivor pick. You know what he said? All right, I got you. He hasn't picked the Ravens since. You know what he did last week? This is ballsy. It's ballsy. He picked the Browns for his sole survivor pick. The Browns. They were at home versus the 49ers. The Browns. Yes. And they got it done. Good for you, man. That's a hell of a sole survivor pick. Indeed. 9-7 for Insane Juggernaut. Just missed out on double digit victories, but once again, better than me. And so, hey, to the victors go to spoils, like I said earlier. Eduardo O'Neal, 10 to six, double digit victories for Eduardo O'Neal. He got it done in week number 14, and uh, he's been hot of late. He's been really coming on strong, and he continues his good picks with another solid week, 10 and six. And uh, my hat's off to Eduardo O'Neal for continuing to, and he's off to another start. And I'll tell you why in a second, why he's off to another good start in week number 15. Flash Goodman, Flash Goodman rebounded off of a terrible week last week. Flash Goodman back in double digit victory territory with the 10 and six mark. And so uh, he bounced back. He, was, he had a rough week last week, but he bounced back in a major way. Got it done, 10 and six. And so he's back in the winning circle is a flash good win. Again, I'm upset. I didn't get it done. And he had been better than me. I got him last week and now he's back in front of me again this week. I don't like it. I won't stand for it. And like I said, I'm out for blood this week, man. I'm gonna sink my teeth into all of y'all asses this week. I'm mad. I'm pissed off. And Flash Goodwin got me at 10 and 6. Carmen Ron, 10 and 6, sole survivor pick, Seattle Seahawks. And they won in convincing fashion versus the Baltimore Ravens. So a uh, big week for Carmen Rana with the 10 and six mark. So double digit victories once again for Carmen Rana. And like I said, since coming on the circuit about a month ago, Carmen Rana has been extremely efficient in making picks. And once again, 10 and six, getting it done here in the lab room as uh, the sole survivor pick also coming through for Carmen Rana with the Seattle Seahawks getting it done in a major way over the Baltimore Ravens. Money Miz, my man, Money Miz. Let me tell you a quick story. Money Miz sent me an email, and I've been hard on Money Miz because Money Miz won the sole survivor, the third annual sole survivor pool. And I told you that he had went away for a while, had school work, and had to get that stuff in order, and rightfully so was able to come back, I guess Christmas break hit, and he was like, yeah, I got some time on my hands now. So he came back, started sending me picks, and he came back at seven and nine. Boom, NFL smacked him right in the face. Like, hey man, you think you're gonna take a three, four, five, six week sabbatical and just come back in and jump into some double digits? Hell no, that's not how it works. So the NFL blessed him with a seven and nine mark. He kind of picked up the pieces the next week, but it still wasn't quite where he wanted to be. And, <laughs> He, t he turned it up this week, 11 and 5. Second place here in the lab room. And uh, he sent me his email with his picks for week 15. And at the top of his picks, before he listed his picks, he said, hey man, it's getting rough out there. Better watch your step. <laughs> you got me, man. Well played, money man. Well played. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was rough for me, man. I took a couple of false steps last week. Step on a couple of landmines. I'm good. I'm here. All right. I'm like Wiley e. Coyote, man. I might step on a couple of landmines. I might blow myself up a couple of times, but I'm still here. I'm coming back with a goddamn vengeance this week. But Money Miz got it done last week. 11 and 5, big time picks. He got it done. I didn't. I'm coming for you this week. You on the list. And I, I see you. I see your jokes, Money Miz. I see your jokes. <laughs> You a funny dude, man. Loving it five for money man's last week. Big time. Here in the lab room. But nobody was better. Nobody even came close. Nobody could even 
hold a candle to the show stealer, the showstopper, for week number 14 in the lab room, Sean Hawk. Sean Hawk coming in big with an in the lab room tying best 15 and 1 mark. 15 and 1. I'm just. Oh, I'm jealous. I'm so jealous. That is the mark that I had two years ago here in the lab room. My best week of work here in the lab room, 15 and 1, two years ago. He just tied it in week 14. Fifth, if the Broncos do what they supposed to do, this man is perfect last week. He went and he put together a masterful shoot. You can't do it much better than Sean Hall. Oh, oh, this in week number 14. He got me excited. When I saw a sheet, it was crazy. I didn't even know what this man had done. I had two other people say, God damn, Sean Hawk lit it up. And I'm like, really? Did he do that? Well, did I need, do I need to go check this out? And Sean Hawk then sent me a message saying, man, I'm killing it. And then I saw one final man. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. This same juggernaut sent his message and his picks in, and I hadn't still hadn't looked at the picks from the week before yet. And he said, yo, first off, before I even give you my picks, I gotta give a big ups to Sean Hawk, because he killed it last week. I said, damn, did he do? Okay, you know what? Let me go check it out right now. So I stopped everything I was doing. I went and looked at his picks, and I went, and it was win, 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 win. I'm like, god damn, did he lose any games? Did he just go perfect on me? First time in the lab room history? First time, did somebody just go perfect on me? Did he just drop a dime on me? Nah, Denver was down there. Denver was down there incognito trying to slip by. They weren't able to get it done for him, but goddamn 15 and what? Hold on, man. No golf clap. You get a standing OV, baby. Standing OV. For sure. Everybody get up and get that man a standing OV. 15 and 1 in the lab room. You deserve it. You the king this week. I'm coming for your ass this week, Sean Hawk. And he he told me he was making a video for his picks. I can't wait to see it. Hopefully it's already up. He said it would be up today. So I'm looking forward to it. For those of you who care to, to, to find it, Sean Hawk, check him out. That's his name on YouTube. He's supposed to be making uh, some uh, a video with his picks. I can't wait to check it out. Hopefully you'll check it out as well if he does in fact do it. But uh 15 and 1. So that's the house cleaner from last week. You know I'm pissed off. And look, this is how you know I'm serious about mine this week. All right. First off, Thursday night football. Nobody except Carmen Rana and Eduardo O'Neill picked the Rams. And me, I picked the Rams as well. So I'm gonna know this week. Everybody else picked the Buccaneers. I'm clocking and I'm watching all of your asses now. See, normally I don't look at your picks until way down the road. I mean, I'm talking Tuesday of the next week. I don't even know what you guys pick. Okay, this week, I'm watching your ass like a hawk. So I know every single one of y'all picked Buccaneers. Every single one of y'all, except for Carmen Rana and Eduardo O'Neill and myself. We only ones with the Rams, so we all off the one and no start. All the rest of y'all on one. I'm watching every single one of y'all because I'm coming for mine this week. The crown is mine this week. I'm coming for what belongs to me. Pissed off. So, with that being said, I'm, I was 8-8. Eight eight. Overall in the season, I'm 134 and 74. I'm, that's piss poor. That's, that's, that's piss poor, that's unacceptable. 60 games over 500. I was supposed to be 70 games over 500. 80 games over 500 by now. But I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna run with it, and I'm gonna use that as fuel and motivation to do everybody this week. Let's get into these picks quickly, man. I don't have a lot of time. I gotta go. Tampa Bay at St. Louis. Buccaneers lost that game. I'm one and on the season, or excuse me, on the week. I feel good about it, and let's jump through these picks. Jets, Dallas. Saturday night football, look, you know what it is already. Cowboys stink, they can't score points. Jets defense gonna put the clamps down on those boys. Give me the Jets on the road on Saturday to take that one. Chicago at Minnesota. Vikings, they gotta get off of this skin. They're on a two game loser streak. Playoffs approaching vastly. They need this one at the crib versus a Bears team that is out of it now. It's gonna be a tough game, but I expect the Vikings to get back on track for the win versus the Chicago Bears. Atlanta Falcons at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville, lean, lean in close. Hey, come on, Jayville, lean in close. Let me tell you something. You got an opportunity to get back in the AFC South race. Both 
the Colts and the Texans are playing this week. One of them has to lose, and they're both starting backup quarterbacks. Don't piss me off this week, Jacksonville. Don't piss me off. I'm taking the Jacksonville Jaguars to be they struggling, and that's an understatement. Atlanta Falcons team that has lost six games in a row. Give me Jacksonville at home to take those boys down seven in a row. Houston at Indy. Look, this is ugly. Two backup quarterbacks, division lead on the line. I'm taking the home team. I'm taking the Indianapolis Colts to find a way to get it done versus the Houston Texans. Arizona Cardinals at the Philadelphia e Eagles. Bird game versus bird game. Which bird game is going to prevail? The Arizona Cardinals, they're pissed off from last year's result. I thought they got job last year. They thought they got job last year. Well, here's an opportunity to make amends. Go to Philadelphia, do those boys. That's what I'm expecting them to do. Give me the Cardinals on the road to show that they are the superior bird game in that football game. Carolina Panthers at the New York football Giants. Hey, everybody is talking about an upset. The Giants, they almost beat the Patriots. They slayed the Patriots when they were the undefeated team. When the Denver Broncos were going for an undefeated season in 1998, guess who beat them? The New York Football Giants. This Giants team is good enough. They have some momentum right now. They're feeling good about themselves. Everybody is clamoring for the upset. You think it's gonna be an upset? Everybody thinks it's gonna be an upset. Do you smell an upset? I don't smell a goddamn upset. Give me the Panthers to smoke those boys on the road and go to 14 and 0. I'm sick of the cats on them. Go get them, Carolina. Taking the Panthers on the road. Tennessee at New England. Really? Give me the Patriots. Buffalo at Washington. You know where you gotta go if you're looking for the results to that game. Kansas City. Kansas City Chief. Taking on the Baltimore Ravens. Ravens stink. They're either gonna have to start Matt Shaw or they're gonna have to start Jimmy Clausen. Give me the goddamn Chiefs to keep their winning streak going. Cleveland, and that's my social survival pick just in case you were wondering. Cleveland at the Seattle Seahawks. Johnny two time, two time, two time, two time. Johnny two time going on the road against a real defense this week in the Seattle Seahawks. Let's see how he fares. He may play well, he may play well enough to win in Seattle to meet the Seattle Seahawks to win that football game and pretty much solidify their spot in the NFC playoffs. Green Bay at Oakland. It's going to be a tough test for the Packers. They're on a the road. Packers really been struggling on the road of late. And they've been struggling to, to really score points. They got a, a really down Dallas team last week. Scored some points on them. Raiders feeling good, man. They got them a huge win last week versus the Denver Broncos on the road. They're feeling good about themselves. And they, they still think, even though I'm, I'm pretty much saying they're dead. I pronounced them dead when they lost to Kansas City. They still think they got a shot to get in, man. Put them to rest. Give me the Packers to put those boys down and put them down for good for this season. Denver at Pittsburgh. Look, you know how I am about the Steelers, man. I'm a staunch Pittsburgh Steelers supporter. And I, I, I dropped the ball last week. I, I should have picked them. I told you how I felt. I said my head says Cincinnati, my heart says Pittsburgh, but I went with my head and uh, Pittsburgh Steelers got it done last week. You could argue the injuries had to play and the impact in the game, whatever. Look, at the end of the day, Denver without Peyton Manning. And I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I just don't trust Brock Osweiler enough to go on the road and beat a Pittsburgh Steelers team that can put 50 on this team. But look, this is great offense versus great defense. Something's gotta give. Normally great defense beats great offense, but in this case, Denver's been struggling to score. Since Brock Osweiler's entered the lineup, they're last in the league on third down conversions on offense. I don't think that's gonna be good enough to get it done against this Steelers team that can score. Give me the Pittsburgh Steelers to win that game at home. Miami at San Diego. Chargers are done this season. Give me the Dolphins, even though I don't trust them either. Give me the Dolphins to win that football game. Cincinnati at San Francisco. No Andy Dalton, AJ McCarron playing. Look, I like AJ McCarron. And you know how I feel about AJ McCarron. I said, hey, I think he should get a shot to start. Well, Andy Dalton has put that to rest. He's the guy in Cincinnati, unquestioned. But hey, AJ McCarron has an opportunity to show that he shouldn't be sitting on the bench and maybe someone else might come and rescue him from Cincinnati if the price is right. Either way, he's got to go out to the Bay Area and prove that he can get it done. I don't trust him. I, I don't trust him in this spot. Everybody say, oh, they're fine. They're going out to San Francisco. 49ers stink. Well, yeah, they stink. They don't stink at home. They stink on the road. This is a home game. I expect the 49ers to jump up and bite these boys. Give me the 49ers on the road. Yeah, this is an upset. And I may pay for this one. I'll take this one because the payoff is going to be greater. Either I'm going to win this game and nobody else is going to win it, or I'm going to lose this game and I'm going to take this L and I'm going to feel good about it because the rest of my picks iron clad. So if I take this loss, I'll feel damn good about it. But if I take this win, oh, you know. 
you guys are in some serious trouble this week. Detroit at New Orleans on Monday night. Look, it's one of those pick em games. Both of these teams stink. Saints at home, give me the Saints. I'm following the rules this week, man. I'm following the rules this week. And don't give me a W on everybody. If that happens in the National Football League, whether big or small, cover it all here in the lab room. Come back and join me. It's like a team to break down anything. And that's it. The National Football League. Coming back for what's mine. I'm coming for my crown. Anybody that gets in the way, going down. See you next week. When I come back with the W, Sean Hawk, you the man, but only for one week. There's plenty more where that came from. While you're here, subscribe to the channel. If you want more Louis T, be sure to follow me on Twitter at In The Lab Room, or you can like the Facebook page at In The Lab Room. That's In The Lab Room on Facebook and at In The Lab Room on Twitter. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.